Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon popular request, today we're going to check out Dreveni Share. I'm certain that I did not pronounce that correctly. With the video, I didn't believe in Allah until I met the devil. I mentioned this on my live stream. I never watched a video of this guy, but lately I've been getting so many requests. So therefore today, inshallah, we're going to check out his content. That being said, guys, before we jump into it, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Out of everything in life that you can be and all these paths that you can choose, the last thing I thought I would be in life is religious. And I don't mean like spiritual or just believing God in general. I mean actually religious. I was fully atheist. Now, I was raised in a Christian household, but I myself was atheist when I got out of that. And because all the negatives I saw within the Christian church, I just turned my back on religion and God in general. And what's really fascinating about that is the devil kind of hid for me. The shaitan, evil, these kind of things, they hid. They went into silence. They tried to not exist. Whereas God was right. Always... Yeah, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled is to convince humanity that he doesn't exist. Moreover, talking to Muslim brothers, they told me an amazing story, actually, that the shaitan or the shaitan, jinns even, etc., do not appear to atheists why in order to keep them in their mindset right because if you have a richard dawkins for example which is a very famous atheist if he would have a supernatural encounter with a deity of course that in turn then would make him a believer right and so therefore those jinns those shayateen they stay away from the atheist to simply keep him further in that delusion there but i was just not looking i wasn't paying attention and to be fair i was kind of ignoring it and i was never religious and i didn't believe in god in until I saw the devil. Now, not believing in God until you meet the devil isn't random. And I remember speaking to somebody, I wouldn't call him a friend, but somebody I'd met. And he was a Christian and he was telling me about Jesus and his faith. And I was hearing what he was saying, but I wasn't really listening. And I told him, I was like, look, I don't believe in both. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the devil. And he responded that, that the devil's all around us and how could I not see it? Now, he was correct, but it was kind of hiding from me, and I think it hides from people as well. And I told him that if I ever met the devil, I would have to believe in God, and me and the devil would have some serious problems. Because if I were to see one, that means both is true. And yep. if both is exactly. true, that means I have to pick a side, and it's pretty obvious the side you're going to pick. Now yeah, sure, that's just logical, even from a dualistic perspective. If there is evil, then there must be good and vice versa, right? And this is why I don't understand the modern Satanistic perspective. They even have churches, temples of Satan and whatnot. But ultimately, they deny the existence of God. They even go so far to say that there are atheists that worship Lucifer. So how does that make sense? If Satan exists, of course, you must have God. Now, initially through my studies, I thought everybody had it backwards because of Christianity, the Christian perspective on God and Jesus and in hell and heaven. And because of the manipulation within the Christian Bible due to Constantine, it really made it seem like God is evil. Isaiah 45, 7, I believe that's the correct verse. I don't have it in front of me. Where the Christian Bible claims God is evil. God creates evil and makes evil happen. Now we understand God created everything, but as far as makes happen, that is due to Iblis or the Shaitan. And that's just one verse, for example. There's many places within the Christian Bible where they have injected Mithraism for Christians to follow the sun god Mithras. This is a completely different conversation. I'll break it down one day. And this is what led me... It's very funny, to actually. Cool. If you look into the allegation, the allegation towards the Christians is always that they are worshipping the sun god and the allegations towards the Muslims is always that they are worshipping the moon god. In the first place, is it just seemed like everybody had it backwards. Now, I do believe Christianity in different places of the country or different places of the planet are going to be completely opposite of this. But the churches I was raised around and saw were not good people. These were evil people, embezzlement, they were selling and trading Mega churches. back and yeah, forth. Duff. And everything I've seen was just bad. And so this is the main reason why I picked up the Lesser Key of Solomon and started studying the occult in the first place. So one day I decided just to jump into it. Things were kind of standing out to me. I was kind of getting pulled in this direction. And that's when I did my first ritual. Now I'm not going to go into the details of the ritual because it's completely irrelevant. But I got experiences on the first one. There's something required in every single ritual to what make What kind it work. of ritual? Thankfully, most people have it wrong. Most 
people don't know what this thing is and I will never say what it is. But just by chance, I put that thing in this ritual. And so the experiences were insane. Now, I wasn't a full believer when I did this. So keep this in mind. Like I didn't fully believe in anything whatsoever. I was still fairly atheist. And that's why I didn't care to do the ritual. It's because I didn't fully believe in anything. And I wasn't even sure it was gonna work in the first place. I was pretty doubtful, but I was open-minded and willing to give it a shot and see what comes out of this. Yeah, so this is very confusing to me because as he mentioned, he was an atheist, but then he's doing a ritual which should invoke, at least in theory, the supernatural. So I don't really understand the connection there. It would have been good if he would have mentioned how he got into that ritual, if there was a third party inviting him to the ritual, etc., etc., you name it. Otherwise, it's very confusing to me because I simply don't understand why a materialistic atheist would engage in such activity. Of course, it got an insane reaction. And that's where I felt panic mixed with curiosity because one side of it was like, oh crap, I summoned a demon. What did I do? Was this wrong? Now, today I understand this is Jin, but I was questioning myself like, did I do something really bad? What is going to come out of this? Is it going to be bad? And then the curiosity side mixed in. It's like, okay, can we do this again? And can we replicate it? And then what kind of results can we get do by doing that? And so naturally, I just kept poking the bear. My curiosity got the best of me. I started diving in with different things. Now, thankfully, I didn't branch out much and start poking at everything in existence there's some practitioners that like to play spiritual pokemon and they want to go after every spirit possible and try to have a connection with literally everything i wasn't one of those people i stuck to a few things and try to get in really deep with them but even still to this day even speaking out against this People still ask me how to do this all the time. And I want people to understand, I'm never going to explain this. I'm not going to tell you the missing pieces from most people's rituals. 99% of people, their rituals are pointless and they're never going to work. And I'm never going to teach how to do this. Every ritual you ever do comes at a cost. There is so many hoops you have to jump through, so many things you have to give to the jinn just to get any kind of result. And then the result- Yeah, we know that. It is pretty much common knowledge in Islam that people that engage in sihr, in magic, in dark magic, have to humiliate themselves to come further and further into contact with the jinn. It is quite hilarious, actually, if you think about it, and tragic in many ways, because the jinn doesn't need those sacrifices of you. He simply wants to see how you humiliate yourself, and then he will give you what you want, right? And those humiliation practices can start very mildly, but then become darker and darker. Many people that have been called to defile the Quran, the Billah, and then after that, defile themselves as well with urine, human excrement and whatnot. It's very, very disgusting. But as I said, it is not really needed at all. The jinn simply wants to see you humiliated and then he will give you what you want. The things you have to give to the jinn just to get any kind of result. Yeah, and, the result and people will do that. you do get out of this is going to be one-sided. It's going to be so temporary and it's going to be taken away from you. And then you're going to have to do another ritual. And my biggest question to those people, because I still have some practitioners watching these videos, my biggest question is if rituals worked, if they were truly effective and you gained something out of it, why are people doing rituals for 40 years? Why are they doing rituals for 30 years? Why are they doing it at all? If rituals seriously worked and these occult practices weren't one-sided, why do people have to continuously do them over and over and over again? Yeah, okay, I don't find this a good argument whatsoever. I'm going to play devil's advocate now, quite literally. If Islam works, why do you need to keep on praying? Why do you need to keep on praying five times per day over and over again if Islam truly works, right? Anything in life needs continuity. And therefore, in order to stay in contact with that jinn, of course, you need to continuously practice this dark path. So this is not a good argument. If they worked, your protection ritual would protect you permanently. Your money rituals would grant mm, you money no. forever. Your love rituals, you would get Why? married immediately and it would never divorce. These things don't work. They are one-sided, they are temporary, and you are going to lose. There's no way to win. You can't negotiate with the jinn. But that being said, I made that promise that day. No, of course not. So before anybody gets the wrong idea here, I'm not advocating for those practices, quite the opposite. However, it is important to understand that they do work. If you look into the occult practices of Hollywood, the reason why you see those people on the big screen is because those things do work. That individual, that if the devil ever showed himself to me, he made a big mistake. 
because that means he's real. And there's this big quote in the West, people might have it in other countries too, where they say that the biggest trick the devil ever played was that he Yo. hid that he existed or something along those lines. And for a long time, I never understood this quote. I didn't believe it. I was like, what? He just hid himself? That's not a trick. That's not fooling anybody whatsoever. People know the devil exists. Now today, I understand. I understand fully because if people are aware that the devil is real, they're not going to fall for the bullshit. They're going to go towards God. They're going to go towards the Quran. They're going to find true faith. Now, I also want everybody to keep in mind that everybody's on their own path. For me, this is what it took. It took me to see the devil, to realize God was real and was right there the entire time. And it's because I went through every single other faith and studied all these different religions where I know the Quran is true. But why did the devil show himself to you? And I can never look away from it. And this is due to my curiosity and in leading into darkness and leading into the wrong path and falling on my face over and over again is how I can fully say with confidence that the Quran is the truth. But I'm not sure, and I don't think anybody will ever know, if I was able to achieve the same result without going through all that failure. Was I able to just pick up the Quran? and embrace it initially or did I have to go through all this now the reason why I'm talking about this is so more people can understand as we get closer to November we're going to be seeing more people do the same thing that I did as things get darker as things get more challenging as the division gets greater as the darkness gets blacker we're gonna see more people realize where the light is and more people that you may think are off the deep end may turn around very quickly and I've been seeing this through my own experiences. Just going out in society, you're seeing people open their eyes. You're seeing people come to the light a lot more than usual. In my situation, isn't uncommon. There was nothing unique about what I went through. And it's no surprise that we live in a pivotal point of history, but we are about to see a lot of people wake up. Oh, right, guys, this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. As I said already, you guys wanted me to react to this video. However, just watching this one video for me was not really enough. I didn't really understand the context, who that person is. He was saying that he was an atheist, then he was involved in some sort of ritual. What kind of ritual was it? No, I'm not asking of him to explain the ritual, but how he got into it, what the reason behind it was, why he wanted to do a ritual, etc., etc., you name it. Like this, it was very superficial for me. I have many more questions now in order to fully understand where he is coming from. But that being said, yes, once you understand that there is a devil, of course, logically, then you have to conclude that there must be a creator as well. I mean, just looking at certain supernatural entities, if they already exist, let alone the devil, there must be some sort of greater power as well, because the atheistic, materialistic mind is limited to this realm here, and all you see is flesh monkeys walking around. You cannot even fathom that there is something greater. And once you see that there are greater energies, if you will, certain entities, beings, once you experience that, of course, you have to conclude that there is a hierarchy to this. And the question becomes, what is on top of that hierarchy? In Islam, we, of course, believe that this is the creator, the creator that created everything. And about the rituals, as I said throughout the video, they absolutely do work. He used the wrong phrasing here. He said they do not work. What he should have said is they're not sustainable. They do not give you sustainable peace, sustainable happiness. And of course, they're not going to give you a positive outcome in the afterlife either. But they do work. If you look into the occult, if you look into the occult behind Hollywood especially, and into the occult practices behind politics as well, you will see, of course, that those rituals do work. There are certain humiliation rituals that people go through in order to be accepted in those circles. And then further, of course, stay in those circles. You always have to prove your worth or rather the lack thereof in order to stay in those circles, in order to receive those things of the jinn. It is a very, very real dark phenomena that starts with, as I said, humiliating yourself and ends in human sacrifice. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my channel because YouTube is always steadily demonetizing, shadow banning, etc. All right, but this is it for today's video. As always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajzai. Ah.